Oh, buddy. Listen. All right, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. We going up into the lab right now so we can have this conversation. We going up into the lab right now to have this conversation. Come on in. Come on. Come on. Come on. This was crazy. We got to have this conversation. This was like pretty amazing. This was pretty amazing. Absolutely amazing. And definitely something we should talk about. This was crazy. Oh my God. This was absolutely phenomenal. Hats off to the Clark sisters. Hats off to the Clark sisters. What an amazing uh, display that God would favor them, even in their life, to be able to uh, experience something such as this. Usually this happens when one dies and passes off the scene. Uh, of course, their mother didn't get to see it, but they got to see it, and they got to be a part of it, and even starting it at the very end, which is beyond phenomenal. So when you consider that, uh, there's a lot of life lessons. There's a lot of life lessons uh, and I know we're on the verge of Easter and all of that. So happy Easter to everybody. I know that we are quarantining and we are uh, social distancing and all of that kind of stuff. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. We're going to be here for a half a second. Come on in. Let's chat. Come on in. Uh, this was worth me coming back. I've been on a self-imposed uh, sabbatical in my studio writing and, and, and just dealing with new music and the whole nine. God has blessed us and opened up the floodgates, and I'm grateful. And you're going to be hearing new stuff coming out very, very, very soon. But let's talk about the Clark Sisters movie. First of all, first of all, uh, for the world who's watching, if you enjoyed the movie, give them a thumbs up right now. Just put a thumbs up in the air right now. Put the thumbs up in the air right now, letting them know that you love the movie. Let's just start right there. Thumbs up. Uh, I'm going to invite the Clark sisters to come over here eventually and look at this. They may not join us tonight and all of that, but I'm definitely going to invite them to come and 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 check out the, the page and, and to get some of the stuff that we were gleaning. So just put a thumbs up on the page right now. Put a thumbs up up there right now. Uh, listen, so many lessons, so many lessons uh, to be gleaned. And I, I, I was live uh, chatting with you. And dropping nuggets and dropping bombs through the whole through the whole event, and I actually have them written down so we can walk through them. The number one thing, first again, once again, hats off to the Clark sisters. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. Uh, I've been blessed to to uh, uh, to know them and to walk with them many years, and uh, I'm grateful to see their trajectory as they've seen mine as well. Uh, but it's been a great journey. Uh, I do uh, some of Dorinda's workshops and things that she does with the with the singers and the whole nine. Um, uh, and it's just been great to see them uh, matriculate through the industry and to be able to take everything that they've learned and to take it to the next plateau. Uh, so let's talk about the movie. Let's talk about the movie. Let's talk about the movie. The first thing, and I'm, I'm going to reference everything back to the person who said the various things and the lesson within it. Maddie instilled in the girls that it's either going to be easy or excellent. She said that it was sinful to use the word easy. And I love that. I love that because I ascribe to that same mindset that there's always an easy way. There's always an easy way to get stuff done. However, the easiest way is never going to be the lasting way. It's never going to be the lasting way. It's going to be just an easy way to get something done. And at the end of the day, you'd be happy that you just kind of got it out of the way, but it's never going to be lasting. OK, uh, uh, she considered it a curse. I love that, that she considered it a curse and she instilled that same mindset. That's why the girls sang the way they sang. That's why they pushed as hard as they pushed. It all came from Maddie. It all came from Maddie. Maddie was really the star of the show. Now, Maddie also proved by that statement that a man's gift will make room for him. Proverbs 18, 16 says that a man's room, gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. This is definitely true in that instance because of Maddie's uh, tenacious character and because she was so strong. She propelled her girls to a place that they didn't even realize they could reach. She propelled them to a place they didn't even realize they could reach. We'll get there in a minute. The husband, the husband, on the other hand, uh, 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 the man here. He proved 
something otherwise. He basically said that your uh, your ambition will be challenged by others. He proved that your ambition will be challenged by others and you must always know your God-given purpose. He told her that you're no use, you have no use to me. Now, I wonder at what point was she of no use? Was it before the children? Not. It was definitely after the children and after she realized who she was. So be be very careful of who you link yourself with, because what tends to happen is after they get what they want from you, the sex, the children, the girls, the success hadn't come at the full range yet. Otherwise, he would have saw another side. So he would have been able to benefit from that. But he was saying that she's of no use because she was now not willing to do what he wanted done. That's horrible. That's horrible. And as a man, we have to be very cautious. We have to be very cautious of that. Because what happens is oftentimes the woman in a relationship will surrender herself to the man and expect him to be the care winner and the breadwinner and all that stuff. I know we're in a new day now and I'm not downplaying women in this culture, but uh, women will still bear women that still trust the man to be who they're supposed to be. And oftentimes men let the women down. And this man let her down. He beat on her. He disrespected the girls, all of that type of thing. Let's move on. But Maddie also proved this, that excellence is a choice. She told the girls that excellence is a choice, basically. She said, you can choose the easy road or you could choose the excellent road. It's a choice. It's a choice. How hard you choose to go in your career, in your life, it's a choice. So you have to make that choice. Nobody can make that choice for you. You got to make that choice. You have to make that choice. And it's it's definitely instinctive. It's instinctive. Your parents can't make that choice for you. You have to make that choice. I definitely push further than I think my dad and my mother ever thought I would push. Because, of course, while they lived, I was at home living in their back room until I was 23 years old and I was developing my craft, but I didn't see the route to success yet. So for a while, they probably thought, like, this guy's going to be a bum. No. I was developing something that would take me and propel me to the next range of my career, okay? I was dealing with that excellent quotient. The question is, where are you with your life, with your career? Are you dealing with that excellent quotient? Are you moving to the next level? Share this with other people. Share this with other people. They need to be on here so we can have this community conversation. Hit that share button and share it with other folks, okay? Where are you in your life with the excellent quotient? Do you just do it to get by? That's why when I talk to people and I say, how you doing? I'm making it. I'm doing better than I should. I don't want to hear that. That lets me know that you're not living a fulfilled life. That lets me know that you're just living from day to day. You don't really care. I wake up with purpose. I wake up and I come in my studio every day with purpose. I plan to get something accomplished. I want to do something that's going to leave a lasting legacy for my children, for my family, for my, for my, for my lineage. Excellence is a choice. Let's move on. The marriage, the marriage proved this to me, that when you won't do what people want, then they'll tell you that you're useless to them. I I covered that earlier. When you won't do what people want, then they'll tell you that you're useless to them. Now, let's go a little deeper with that, because that's just not in a, a marriage with a ring ceremony, with a ring ceremony. That ain't just the ring ceremony. When you get in business with people, you're in marriage with them. When you sign a deal with somebody and you walk through with them, you're in business with them. That's a marriage. So be careful who you even get in business with. Because when I co-write with people, when I work with people, when I publish with people, all of that type of thing, that's a relationship. That's a marriage. And you are married for the life of the song. As long as the song lives, you're in the marriage with that person. So I'm very cautious who I marry with. This is my fourth finger. I'm not giving nobody the finger. This is my fourth finger, that ring finger. Be careful who you get up in marriage with. Be careful who you marry because at a certain point, they will let you know that you are useless to them because you're not doing what they want you to do. Jesus, that's what the marriage showed me. Domestic violence must never be tolerated. That's something else the marriage showed me, that domestic violence must never be tolerated. Men, if you're out here beating on your woman, you're a weak man. You are a weak man. That don't make you strong that you can make her bow down to you. You showing that you are weak. You are taking out your frustrations from the world on your woman. 
You suck. You are a weak man. Yes, I said it. And if I see you in the, in the streets and I see you beating up on your woman, we're going to have a conversation. We're going to have a conversation because that's not what men do. Now, women, on the other hand, we can be abusive as well. Women can be abusive as well because women can use their verbal qualities and withhold their goodies from a man in a, in a form of abuse as well. And sometimes a man is trying and culture is against him. He's pushing against culture and sometimes culture is not working with him. And we have to also be patient in that regard and don't berate your man with your mouth. Ladies, ladies, don't berate your man with your mouth when he's trying. If he's trying, if he's helping you raise the children, if he's helping you around the house, if he's helping you with the bills, don't berate the man. Don't berate the man just because you're looking across the, 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 the grass at somebody else's situation. The grass is always greener where it's watered. The grass is always greener where it's watered. Okay? The first three years of our marriage, the first, no, the first uh, two years, maybe three years of our marriage, my wife worked at Allstate and I was an independent contractor. I was an independent producer working around the country doing my thing. I didn't have insurance, but I was on my wife's policy for the first couple of years. My wife didn't berate me. She trusted me and she trusted the gift that was in me and she helped to water it. She watered it with saying kind words. She didn't berate it. I used my money to help to build the family, help us buy the homes. We put our monies together to do other things. She also carried us on that insurance until I ended up with a job that gave us and granted us insurance and catch this piece. My job was always to retire her. So the moment that I ended up in a great situation, I retired her and it's been now, Jesus the Christ, since Alex was born, it's been 22 years. See, if she had berated me, we would have missed out on the blessing together. So ladies, don't berate, but men, don't beat. That's, that's antithetical to God's will. Let's move on. What else did we learn here? Sometimes, catch this, you must leave behind that which is not profitable nor safe for you. The marriage showed us that sometimes you got to leave behind what's not profitable nor safe for you. The wife took the kids and got the heck up out of there because it was not profitable, nor was it safe. And as in a, in a, in a marriage, sometimes when it's not profitable and it's not safe, especially the safe part, but also the profitable part, sometimes we get married too soon. Sometimes we get married to the wrong persons. We just, we fell in lust. We didn't fall in love. We fell in lust. And we have to know the difference because it's very easy to fall in lust. A little bit of weed or a little bit of drink will make you fall in lust. The right song at the right time, the right outfit, the right cologne, the right perfume will make you fall in lust, but it, may, it won't make you fall in love and it won't be lasting. Hmm. Lust versus love equals lasting. Lust versus love equals the lasting qualities of it. So sometimes you must leave behind that which is not profitable nor safe for you. Let's move on. Maddie in the studio and in her workshops, she taught us that Maddie was well-trained in her profession. They never talked about her, her educational background. I, I would believe that she probably had a little bit of educational background, but she came from the school of hard knocks. She came from the school of hard knocks. She knew what she knew and she exercised it the way she did. Her throwing shoes, that didn't come from a university. She didn't learn that from a university. Her, her, her uh, 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 walking up to somebody in an old school usher uniform, grabbing, a, grabbing, you know, grabbing their gum out of their mouth. You don't get that from a university. Okay. She got that from the school of hard knocks. That's old school church. But she was good at what she does. And she, her brother, catch this piece, was Bill Moss. Bill Moss. You may know that name. That's the father of Jay Moss and Bill Moss. Hmm? Her brother was Bill Moss. Her name was Maddie Moss Clark. Her brother was the engineer in the studio, engineering the record. So she hung around her brother enough to know the technical terms to be able to produce her children. Catch this. Not only did she produce them from her womb, she produced them in the room, in the studio. 
See, see, don't just take one gift and think it stops there. Be able to go deeper. She sat around her brother enough to realize that one day I need to know this. I need to know this because I'm going to have to produce these girls. Yeah, you my brother and all of that, but I want to be able to speak life into them to get what I need out of them because I trained them. She learned her craft, okay? She learned her craft and she took it very seriously. I didn't agree with the shoe piece. I certainly didn't agree with the shoe piece and anybody that would have threw a piece, threw a shoe at me, would have got a shoe back at him. So thank God I didn't come up around that era. I didn't come up around that era, okay? That wasn't my that wasn't my go-to. Thank Jesus. Because my story would have been a little different. Okay? But she took her craft diff she took it seriously. That's what it really showed me more than anything, that she took her craft seriously. My question to all of us is: how serious do we really take our craft? When we get up to sing before people, when we get up to minister before people, how serious are we about our craft? When we're in the studio working, how serious about, are we are about, about our craft? We post stuff nowadays just to show that we're doing something. Just because you're doing something don't mean you're productive. Activity doesn't mean productivity. Somebody needs to write that. Activity does not mean productivity. Hmm? Oftentimes, they're antithetical to one another because you could be busy doing a lot of things, but not doing anything that's profitable. You just posting pictures, getting off planes, getting on planes, walking in a hotel room, showing my room. This is my room. This is my gift basket. That's floss. That's not productivity. That's floss. Hmm. I'm going to move on from that because I could live there for half a minute. Let's move on. The sisters in the studio showed us that studio work is not for the faint of heart. Studio work is not for the faint of heart. See, we got this, this rose colored glass view of what the studio is. It's a cool spot. It's a hangout spot. It's a hangout spot. Anybody that's ever worked with me, you know that the studio is probably as close to hell as you're going to get. Because it ain't going to be an easy road for you. And I've sent people home. I will send you home. You may think you're the big cheese at your church. You may be the big cheese on your local stage. But when you get in a room with the people that really know what they're doing, you also you might realize that you're great at cheese and you can't hold up. The studio is not for the faint of heart. And Maddie pulled it out of them to the point that we see them today. All right, let's move on. Bill Moss, I told you, was her brother. That was her brother. Talent runs in the family. Talent runs in the family. You have to look for it. Parents, you have to seek for it. Talent runs in the family. Your children have something. They may not have the same skill set that you have, but they have something. So you have to find that talent, find that gift, and cultivate it. Pour into it. Water it. Speak life to it. Maddie knew how to speak life to it. You caught her speaking words of positivity at different times to the different girls. Yeah, she was hard. She was tough at times, but she knew how to pull them aside and let them know. She told Twinkie, you the backbone. I need you to take over the group. She told Karen that, uh, that uh, 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 you, you are, uh, uh, you're a little nervous right now. You're a little nervous right now, but you got something inside of you. So she sang the front part of the song in front of the crowd to show her how it was done. And then she passed the mic to her and said, spoke life into her. She spoke life into her through the words of the song. And Karen took the song and the rest is history. She told uh, uh, Dorinda. No, that was Karen. That was Karen. And then she told Dorinda that you're my rock. You're my rock. You are the baby me. You are Maddie Jr. What does that say to a child? That is speaking such hope to a child, letting them know that, listen, you got everything I got in me. You got it in you. Are you affirming your children today? Are you affirming your children today? Now, I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to throw this out there because I've done a master class and I do these master classes. If this information is blessing you, my cash app is It's Kevin Bond, I-T-S Kevin Bond. Feel free to sow a seed. 
feel free to sow a seed. That's something that we have a challenge with these days. We take information, we run with information, but we rather, rarely pour back into the ones who are doing the sowing. My cash app, again, is It's Kevin Bond. Somebody put it on the screen. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper because this information is going to help you through your family. This information is going to help you through your life. It's going to help you through your job. So sow back in as you are reaping. As you are reaping, sow back in. My cash app is It's Kevin Bond. It's Kevin Bond. I-T-S Kevin Bond. Sow back in as we, as we minister to you. Let's go deeper. Talent runs in the family. What you do with it is your choice. Talent runs in the family, but what you do with it is your choice. Maddie taught us, catch this, she taught the girls responsibility. She taught the girls responsibility because what she did was collecting money from them that she held. And when the one girl got married, she gave it back to her. Basically as a dowry saying, hey, take this and run with it. Take this and use this to get started. What do you have to give back to your children to get them started? Sometimes you have to take something from them to discipline them, to learn, help them to learn that life is not free. You have to take something from them. Thank you so much, Bobby Ward, for sewing. Thank you so much. Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. Thank you for sewing. Thank you for sewing. Sometimes you have to take something from your children to be able to reward them with something down the line to help them understand that life is not free. Everything in life costs you something. And if, it not, if it's not costing you something, it's costing somebody else something. Mm. We as parents are paying the price all day long for our children. At a certain point, we have to be able to pass the baton to them and show them the discipline of life. And show them, thank you, Valerie, and show them the discipline of life. Thank you for sewing in. Thank you. It's Kevin Bond, my cash app. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Maddie used the conferences. Brian Hurt, thank you, sir. Maddie used the conferences. Catch this. Maddie had a platform. Maddie was what Karen, uh, what Dorinda is, what Dorinda was before Judy ended up taking that spot, was promoted to that spot uh, uh, as, the region, as the minister of music. See? That was, that was Maddie's position. That was Maddie's position. So what she did was took her position and used it to help to promote her daughters. She used it to help to promote her daughters. That speaks volumes. She could have took it for herself alone and built her own platform for workshops and speaking and preaching engagements. Instead, she used it to promote somebody else, her kin, because she knew that they would pour into others. Siobhan, thank you for pouring in. Thank you for pouring in. Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. Sona, thank you so much. Tamala, thank you so much. So here's the deal. What do you do with your platform? God has given us all a platform. Darian, thank you. What are you doing with your platform? What do you do with the harm and thank you? What are you doing with the platform that God has given you? Who are you elevating on your platform? Ah. Who are you, thank you, Sona, who are you elevating on your platform to reach somebody else? The Bible says, thank you, Tamala, as you sow, so shall you reap. If you sow sparingly, thank you, Christopher, you will reap sparingly, but if you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. Maddie sowed bountifully, and look at this. How many years later, Calvin, thank you so much, we are seeing the fruit of her labor all these years later. Maddie was born in 1925. 1925. We are seeing the fruit of her labor right now through the Clark sisters. What are you doing with your platform? Who are you allowing to stand on your platform? And don't let them just stand on your platform and, 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 and make you look good. Harmon, thank you so much. Don't let them just stand on your platform to make you look good. What are you doing to help them? Theory, Thomas, thank you. What are you doing to promote them? What are you doing to promote them while they're helping you? Hmm? Hmm? Twinkie, in a moment of rage, spoke out and says that I'm just doing you. I'm just helping you without realizing that, no, Twinkie, your mother helped you. She gave you an opportunity. She gave you a captive audience. Terry, thank you so much. She gave you a captive audience, thousands. Kimberly, thank you. She gave you a captive audience at will, thank you, at the 
UNAC convention. I came to know the Clark sisters at the UNAC convention from those records and those songs because Maddie released the platform to them. Twinkie missed the point. Yeah, mom was tough because sometimes parents have to be tough where kids are weak. Ha! Will, thank you. Sometimes parents have to be strong where kids are weak. As parents, we know the strengths and the weaknesses of our children. Maddie knew certain things about Twinkie's life that would not happen in Karen or Dorinda's life or Denise's life. And she tried to shield her. She tried to protect her. Jada, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. If this is blessing you, sow back, sow back, sow back. As you sow, so shall you reap. That's spiritual reciprocity. That's spiritual reciprocity. So let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Maddie could have promoted, I told you, her own career, but she chose to promote the next generation. Catch that part. Not only was she promoting her children, she was actually sowing into the next generation. And here's the craziest part about it. Here we see Kiki playing her mother, the next generation. The next generation played the previous generation because the previous generation built that generation. Maddie built the girls. Karen built Kiki. And we saw Kiki on stage idolizing her mom and playing her mom because of the fruit of her grandmother. Jesus Christ, have mercy. Because of the fruit of her grandmother. Your children's children. A wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. We just saw that play out. A children's children's children. So now we're about to see it in the life of Kiki's children. Children's children's children. Children, Karen. Children, Kiki. Ch uh, Kiki's child. Children's children's children. My father, Alex Tebon now into the lives of my children with their gifts and talents. Tony and I's children with their gifts and talents. Alex Taylor, uh, uh, Kiera, uh, 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 Alex Taylor, Kiera, and Philip, and then their children, children's children's children. She paid it forward. She paid it forward. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. I love the fact, and this is a tough one. Catch this, catch this, catch this one. Mad Maddie had to affirm the girls because the father wasn't there to do so. She constantly had to affirm them because the father was missing in action. We need to talk about the men here. Let's talk about the men here. Yes, yes, J. Drew, J. Drew Sheard. Young J. Drew is running Karen's record label. That's that's Kiki's brother. So that's the children's children. We, same same dynamic. Same dynamic. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Ray, uh, Ryan Fulton. And he was also one of the uh, uh, producers behind the scene on the movie. His name is listed. Uh, I'm sure it was the father, but it was also the son. Uh, the uh, 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 Maddie had to affirm the girls because the man was absent. Fathers affirm the family. Mm. When there's no man present, the woman had to do it all by herself. Hats off to Maddie Moss Clark for affirming the girls, for affirming the girls, even in the midst of the situation. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. If this is blessing you, so back in, so back in. Let's go deeper. Maddie had to be a boss in the absence of the man who believed in her gift. He was absent. The man was absent. So she had to be a boss. She had to take it to another level. And that level was too much for him. Mm, how about that? It was too much for him. He couldn't handle it. <sighs> and she had to also cover the gifting of her girls. You know what that showed me? That showed me that men, catch this, a woman will succeed with you or without you. Of course, it would be so much better if she did it with you because you could both go up the ladder together. But if you are absent, man, she would do it without you. And there are some women who have stepped away from families as well that the man had to also ascend the ladder with the children without you. God's plan 
was for a family. Before he created a church, he created a family. Before he created a body of believers that would come together to congregate, that's what the church is, not the building. The building is the temple, the synagogue, the place of worship. But the church is the people. Before he created the people that will come together to congregate, the church, the ecclesia, E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A, the ecclesia, the gathering, the gatherers, the gathering of worshipers, he created a family. Let's not break up that family. Let's try to keep that family together as much as possible. Let's move on. Maddie passing the mic to Karen sealed the fact that she believed in her. We talked about that earlier. Who's, who are you passing the mic to? Who are you passing the baton to? You have a baton in your hand. Who are you passing that baton down to? Hmm? Who are you passing it down to? The leaders, leaders, pastors, uh, 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 worship leaders, ministers of music, uh, CEOs of companies. Who are you passing the mic down to? Who are you passing the mic down to? That's the question. Who? 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 Who's the one that's coming after you that's going to carry the company? Or will the company fall apart when you leave? Many of us take great solace and great pride in knowing that they can't do it without me. If they can't do it without you, you are a poor leader right now because you have not given them the tools to succeed. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to leaders. If they can't, if that church can't succeed without you, you are a poor leader. You need to step down right now and let God raise somebody up in your stead because that's not the goal. Moses walked with Joshua, passed the baton to Joshua. Elijah passed the baton to Elisha. David passed the baton down to Solomon. Contrary to belief, John the Baptist passed the baton to Jesus. It got quiet. It got real quiet. It got real quiet. John the Baptist passed the baton to Jesus. Yeah, he did. Yeah. John prepared the way. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. A voice crying in the wilderness. And as soon as Jesus stepped on the scene, John stepped back off the scene. The problem is John had people still chirping in his ear. So when he was locked in prison, they said, are you the one or should we keep looking for another? How did John get confused? Because he had people, the wrong people chirping in his ear, as many leaders do. Many leaders have the wrong people chirping in their ear. So when the replacement comes, there's always somebody in your ear saying, he ain't the one. He don't want, he just wants your position. You're a weak leader if you don't recognize your replacement. You're a weak leader. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to leaders right now. You're a weak leader if you don't understand your replacement when God sends them to walk alongside you and to take the baton when it's time to hand off. Ah, I can live there. I need to move on from there, but I can live there. Maddie and business. What did we learn? Cash app. It's Kevin Bond. If this is benefiting you, if you are receiving wisdom, if you are receiving uh, points of knowledge that's going to help you along your journey, feel free to sow a seed. Feel free to sow a seed. It's Kevin Bond. ITS Kevin Bond. Feel free to sow a seed. Maddie and business showed us that while you are warring in the spirit, Somebody's got to be warring from you in the flesh. <sighs> While the girls were on stage ministering, Maddie was on the side of the stage fighting with the promoter, getting their money. Why? Because it's a business. I said it. It's a business. And many of us are too kind when it comes to the business side. And we don't know how to collect our coins. In the words of Rachel, Rachel, uh, <laughs> Rachel James with the coin. She's using words from uh, 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 the show, the coin. We don't know how to collect our coin. We too nice with people and people take advantage of us. And they got us coming all over the country, ministering all over the place. And they don't want to pay you to do the work. They give you half of a hotel room. They may send somebody to pick you up at the airport. They may not. And what they promised you, what they promised you, sometimes it's not even what we negotiated. It's what they promised you. They didn't even deliver upon. Maddie was on the side warring in the flesh, in the natural, 
while her sisters or her daughters were warring in the spirit. Who's fighting for you while you're fighting for God? Ah, I need to hit a kick drum. I got a kick drum on that one. Who's fighting for you while you're fighting for God? That's a cash app by itself. It's Kevin Bond. That's a cash app by itself because many of us are struggling right now because we don't have nobody to fight for us. We're not strong enough to fight for ourselves, so we need somebody to fight for us. Who's warring for you in the flesh while you're warring in the spirit? Hmm? While my, 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 my little sister, Bridget Hurt, I have no problem with the fact that I know she's warring in the spirit because I know her husband, Brian, is warring in the flesh on the side of the stage. He may be on the drums, but after he gets off the drums, he's going to be warring in the flesh to make sure that she's taken care of. Who's fighting for you? Who's fighting for you while you're fighting for God? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a business. The Bible said... In business, Jesus said in business, be men. That means to occupy, occupy, do business until he comes. He said it. He said it that way. He said, occupy till I comes, till I come. That means to do business until I get back here. It's a business. The music industry is a business. Twinkie selling her car. Uh, let me get there. Let me get there. Let me get there. I'm almost there. <sighs> Now, I'm going to say this, and this is a challenge. This is going to be a challenge for many people. I'm going to throw that cash app out there again. It's Kevin Bond. It's Kevin Bond. If you're benefiting from what we're saying, some of y'all been on here since we started, take a moment to sow in. Take a moment. Whatever you sow, we'll be grateful for. We're grateful for whatever you do. Thank you so much. I'm taking the time to pour into you. If you don't mind, ma'am, sir, take the time to pour right back into us to bless us as we bless you. Maddie, I personally feel lacked balance. They didn't talk about that in the movie, but Maddie, to me, lacked balance. She was all church and nothing else. She was all church, except for when she went and got the coin. She went and got the kids some coins. When she was fighting on the side of the stage to get the coin. She was managing on the side of the stage to get the coin, but she didn't have balance. She didn't have time to take to have a relationship. She didn't have time to take to pour into herself. She didn't take care of herself to the point that she was eating the wrong food on the meds, ended up with, in the hospital. I believe she ended up losing a lower limb or an extremity. She lost an extremity before she passed off the scene and ended up, of course, dying as well. She didn't have that balance. It's okay to be God and, and fight for God all your days, but you still need balance. You need some relationships outside of church. You need to do some things outside of church. Kojic was so staunch that you couldn't go to the movies. You couldn't listen to certain mu music. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. There has to be balance. We die for a lack of balance. Or when we get an opportunity to go out, we go so far on the other side that we lose God. We need balance. Maddie, to me, lacked that balance that was necessary. She was disciplined in the ways of God, but didn't know the ways of the world to have that balance. Balance is key. Balance is key. Maddie lived the life of a Christian on and off the stage. I love that about her. She lived the life of a Christian in front of her girls on and off the stage, and we see that life being lived through her girls as well. Of course, there's always going to be one that strays away and has a uh, maybe a bunch of children or a bunch of relationships and all of that type of thing. But by and large, the Bible says, the Bible says that this way, train up the child in the way it should go. And when it's old, they will not depart from it. It, what is it? The training, the training. If you train them, they would not depart from the training. See, if you look at it on a scale, she won. Because the majority of her children are doing exactly what she trained them to do. They did not depart from the training. So that's the blessing in the whole caveat there. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. Bless us if we're blessing you. So let's move on. Maddie affirmed each of her daughters at different times. We told you that. Reza, 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 the guy from the record label. Be mindful of those who would try to break up the family unit. Re Reza was the one who came at 
Twinkie and say, hey, this is all about you. It's not about them. It's about you. So what I'm going to do is buy your publishing from you and and, and give you this checks because we're going to help you. We're going to help you get to where you need to get. Reza had a hidden agenda. Reza had a hidden agenda. And then now let's go deeper. Twinkie ended up taking that money, selling her publishing. I could live there for a while. Your publishing is your lifeline. It's your lifeline. If you're a songwriter, your publishing is your lifeline. When you write with other people, you you share your publishing with them. You share with them as they helped your song to be successful. But your publishing is your lifeline. You don't sell your publishing just to get a quick check. She sold her publishing and they showed a Lincoln on there. But from what I told, it was that it was that old Seville, that Cadillac Seville that had the big slanted back back in the day. The big one had the big old slanted back. She sold it for a car because she once again, there's that balance again. If she had balance and understood a little bit of things about understanding money and handling money, she would have handled money a little bit different. She wouldn't have been so enamored about the car. She would have took the money and put it in a bank and held on to a lot of the money. See? But she cashed that money in and got that car, and she, she was big, big will in it. Never catch this. Never sell your birthright for quick money. Never sell your birthright. The, in, the, in the Bible, they, he, he, the twin, one of the twins sold his birthright for a bowl of soup. Just for a bowl of soup, he sold his birthright. She sold her birthright, which was her publishing, for a car. Now, the beauty of it is that they didn't talk about in the movie that years later she did get her publishing back. God be praised. She got her publishing back. Okay? But there was a, there was a period of time in there that she didn't make money. Other people were making money off the song. She was making songwriter money, but she wasn't making publishing money. Publishing and songwriting money are two different pots. There's 100% in each pot. So you have to know to be able to make your money for the life of your song. Okay? I can live with that. That's a, that's a music piece that we'll deal with at another time. Okay? Never sell your future just for a car or a bowl of soup. Come on now. Artists. Many artists don't even know what publishing is. I said that, and they don't understand the value of it. Many of us are wearing all of our proceeds on our back. We flash in all these brands and all of that type of thing. We don't even understand the nature of it. We don't even understand what publishing is. When it's time to do records, we asking everybody, write me a song, write me a song. And what you're telling them is, I'm willing to pay you instead of shoring up my own career, instead of saying, can we write together? That way you make some money and everybody makes money. Yeah, that alone is cash out by itself. That's cash out for some of y'all right there. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. So back in because this knowledge is going to help you along your journey. It's going to help you along your journey. Okay? We're wearing our profits on our back instead of reaping them during the writing and publishing of our own songs. I said it in that, in that post. I've been living off my publishing for over 40 years. 40 years. And I'm only 56 years old, so you figure it out. I got into this thing early. I got into it early and I did the reading. I got into the understanding of what it is. And this is despite of, in spite of culture vultures who would try to steal your publishing along the journey. There's a couple of guys, a couple of guys, I ain't gonna call no names. I'm gonna withhold the names to protect the guilty who came after me trying to get a publishing deal, trying to get me to sign a, a bootleg publishing deal because they had a couple of my friends in publishing deals. They got them. They wouldn't get me. Mm -mm. Quick money is not lasting money. Quick money is not lasting money. Yeah, this is another master class. This is another master class. This is the Clark Sisters movie music master class. Cash app. It's Kevin Bond. So in as we're blessing you. Don't sell your publishing for a bowl of porridge. You got it? Don't keep recording Hillsong and Planet Shakers and everybody else's music because all you're doing is making them rich and you're not getting anything out of it. You may be selling a few records out of your trunk, but you're not reaping the bigger benefits, which is the publishing. You're making their publishing catalogs huge. Let's keep going and get out of this. I got to get out of this. I got to get out of this. 
The Clark Sisters movie also showed me that there are times when the student must progress and go against the wishes of the teacher. There was a moment in time when Twinkie wrote, you brought the sunshine and said, listen, it's time for us to move away from just the Kojic songs and songs we could sing at UNAC. We got a world ministry. Let's go deeper. And she wrote, you brought the sunshine. She was from Detroit. So she heard Stevie Wonder's music. He lived down the street from them. She knew about Stevie Wonder's music. <clears throat> she was listening to Stevie's music in the back room uh, in headphones because she couldn't listen to it in the house. And it influenced her to the point that she wrote the song, You Brought the Sunshine, off of the groove of Master Blaster. That song became one of their greatest hits. One of their greatest hits. The student had progressed the teachings of the teacher and had to step away and move on to the next level. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. Their crossover success. Catch this part. I love this. When they got to the Grammys, when they finally crossed over and they had the opportunity to sing on the greatest of stages, their crossover success honored Jesus. They never changed. They on there singing a hallelujah song, shouting, going in with them long dresses on. I don't know too many gospel artists who would have took that chance today. Many gospel artists would switch up and come up with a secular set, a gospel little set that's more secular instead of being strong and stand, standing on their convictions. Mm. I can only name a couple that would literally stand flat-footed and call Jesus' name as loud as they could. The two that immediately come to mind are Shirley Caesar and Yolanda Adams. There may be a few others who would do it, but those two immediately come to mind. Shirley will dance on your Grammy stage. Yolanda will stand there and go hard in and cry Jesus as loud as possible. She just recently re re redid uh, uh, In the Midst of It All on The Voice, this, the season finale of The Voice. The other young lady who sang the song with her switched uh, uh, Jesus' name. Yolanda said Jesus as bold as she possibly could. Wasn't going to change. God bought you too far. Don't change when you get to the crossover stage. Hmm? Don't change when you get to the crossover stage. Uh, 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 I believe it was Bridget Campbell's father who said, it's not cross over if you don't take the cross over. It's not cross over if you don't take the cross over. Your career has not crossed over if you don't take the cross over. I think that's Willie James Campbell on steroids with that statement right there. Yeah, I think Willie James Campbell gave us that one. Hmm? Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. I see you in the room. Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. I know you're being blessed by what we're saying to you. Take a moment and pour back into us as we're pouring into you tonight. Okay? This pre-Easter. Pre-Easter. I'm going to be out of here before this is over. I'm going to be out of here. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Maddie. Oh, my God. When the board of the Kojic Church pulled Maddie in, Donnie McClurkin, definitely, I would say he's another one who would stand on that stage and proclaim the name of Christ. Donnie McClurkin, without a shadow of a doubt, is one of those that would definitely stand on that stage and scream Jesus at the top of his lungs and quicken and go in. I've seen it. Donnie is definitely that one. Top three. Shirley. Yolanda and Donnie will go in, will go in with the world watching. At the White House, went in, went in with Barack and Michelle standing there going in with him. Go in. That's what I'm speaking about right there, okay? With the board of the Church of God in Christ, which was all men at that time, that's a problem in and of itself, no balance. That's a problem in and of itself. And even today, a lot of that board is still all men, no balance, and that's just not Kojic, that's many churches. Maddie had to take a stand even when the organization she stood by forsook her. She took a stand for her children and what she built into them and let them know that just like you guys got a ministry, you guys got a calling, I got a calling too. Yeah. I got a calling too. My calling may not be here with you and you may call yourself taking something away from me, 
But God has already blessed my seed, so I've already seen the fruit of my labor. You see that? Already seen the fruit of her labor. Already seen it. So she stood up against the board of the Kojic Church. Yeah, she stood up against them. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. It's Kevin Bond. So in as we're blessing you. Let's go. Let's go. Can you just be happy for me? <sighs> One of the sisters was about to get married and asked the question, can you just be happy for me? Can you just be happy for me? <clears throat> that kind of pierced into my side because it basically let me know that no matter how happy you are from, uh, for other people at times, it's very difficult for people to be happy for you. Even if they don't agree with what you're doing, can you just at least act like you're happy for me just for one time? Some of us are working with people and sewing with people. Hmm? Some of us, some of us, we work and stand alongside everybody else. We help everybody else. And we just want just one person. Can you just be happy for me? This is my moment. You, you, you know people that when you're sharing your good news, they always got other good news to trump your good news. You know people like that? Do you know anybody like that? You got good news, but as you're telling your good news, they telling you about their good news or somebody else that they know they got good news. They, they got some secondhand good news that they just got to trump your good news. And the question is, can't you just be happy for me? That thing, that thing hurt when she made that statement and she held on to it for a minute. Can you, can you just be happy for me? You ain't got to give me nothing. That's what she was basically saying. You ain't got to give me a thing. I just want to know that you're happy for me. Can you just believe in my decision making for a change? That's serious. That lets you know that everybody needs affirmation at a time. Everybody needs to be affirmed at a certain time in their lives. Make sure that you are affirming the people in your circle. You're speaking positively positively into their lives. You're speaking something resolute into their lives. You're affirming them and, and, and shoring up their ideas. Even if you don't agree with everything, let them know that you disagree, but let them know that I still support you. I'm here to support you. You, you got me on a fallback. I'm here for you. I'm here. Can you just be happy for me? Somebody's asking you that today. Can you just be happy? for me. Becky, I know you know what I'm talking about. Can you just be happy for me? Hmm? Cash app. It's Kevin Bond. It's Kevin Bond. Cash app. Bless us as we're blessing you. Let's move on. It's hard for others to be happy for you. Catch this. It's hard for others to be happy for you when you've been the backbone of their existence. Twinkie was the songwriter. Twinkie was the one that was coming up with all the crazy harmonies. Twinkie was the strongest singer for many years, and her sisters gained their strength working alongside her, and then they soon eclipsed the teacher. All of them became super strong, but as she took a step back, they took steps forward, but she was the backbone, and because she was the backbone, when she changed and decided she wanted to do something else, get married, move away. That was a problem. And she asked the question, can you just be happy for me? Jeez, I've been here writing the songs, making you guys look great all these years. Can you just be happy for me? My God, can you just be happy for me? That thing hurt. Twinkie and Maddie showed me that parents must know when to release their children. Twinkie said, your calling is my calling. It's hard for me to tell the difference. I don't even know what the difference is. I don't know who I am. What Twinkie was basically saying to her mother is, I don't really have an identity. My identity is only linked with you. I have to step away to find out who I am. I know this to be true. I know this to be true. That was really my plight when I lived in Chicago, Illinois, under the wings of my father. The, the legendary great Alex T. Bond Jr., Reverend Alex T. Bond Jr. I was Alex Bond's son. I would walk in the buildings. That's Bond's son. Come on up, son. Come on up, son. Get on his organ. 
That's Alex Bond's son right there. That's Alex Bond's boy. Yeah, that's Bond's boy right there. I had to leave the city to understand who I was and move to California for five years to find my identity. I get it. I understand exactly what Twinkie was dealing with. Can you just be happy for me? My dad didn't want me to go play with the Hawkins family. That was the biggest struggle I had to fight my whole life. That was a big challenge. Oh my God, every time that gig came up, it was a challenge. But I had to stand on my conviction and the parent had to realize when it was time to release the child. And he really didn't want to release me. I literally just had to move to California. That was the release. So I, that thing resonated with me. I could live there and tell that story, and I'll tell that story at another time. The hardest thing for a parent is to release their child into their destiny. It's very difficult because parents, we have a vision of what we want our children to be. And we put them on a path. And when children seem to veer off the path that we've put them on, our first response is to try to grab them and put them back on that path. You can't grab somebody that's 23 years old. You can't grab somebody that's 21 years old. You can't grab them at 18. You just try to continue to steer them. Hmm? And it's even harder when ministry is the thread that's holding them. See, I worked with my father for 12 years. I was his minister of music for 12 years. One of my sisters was doing it, and then I, she passed it down to me, and I was there handling the task. So th ministry was the thread, and I knew when I left that he was not going to have anybody to play for him and to be behind the scenes pushing that music ministry. And it was very difficult for him to let go. And years later, he realized that he was glad that I left because it helped me to find my destiny. Mm. Can you just be happy for me? See, I, I can't let that one go. <sighs> Contrary to belief, catch this, people. Your child has an anointing that's unique to them outside of your ministry. Contrary to belief, your child has their own anointing. God has given them their own anointing that has nothing to do with you at all. You may have been the one that poured into them and sowed the seed and put them on the path, but your child has an anointing that's not connected even to you. Allow them to walk in that anointing. Allow them to walk in that anointing. Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. Ka it's Kevin Bond. I already know you're being blessed by the information because you're still here. You're still here. This, this, room, is, this room is full right now. You're still here. So pour back into me as I, as I pour into you. Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. I-T-S, Kevin Bond. Let's get down to the end of this thing. When Maddie was at her lowest point just before she passed off the scene. She was beginning to eat the wrong food, wouldn't take her meds. Her foot was bleeding because of the, the, the challenges she was having there. She ended up losing that foot. She ended up losing that foot. They didn't show that in the, in the movie, but she ended up losing that foot. She ended up losing that foot. We have to understand, and we're in this place right now with what's going on in society right now, that, catch this, catch this, Healing is not antithetical to science and doctors. Healing is not antithetical to science and doctors. You can be healed through science and doctors just as you could be healed from just your belief or your faith mechanism. Just because you have the faith to believe you're healed doesn't mean that your healing is going to come only through your belief system. Your belief system may also mean the doctor that God sent you to that gave you the medicine so you could take the, the medicine. The doctor that gave you the diet that you shouldn't have been eating in the first place. We have to understand that our race, much of the foods, the fatty foods that we eat were because our ancestors were slaves and Massa would give them the scraps from the table. He would give them the hog head and they created hog head cheese. He would give them the innards of the pig and they created chitlins. He would give them the hind part of the pig and they called it ribs. And fat back and hog maws. And lard. Hmm? And all that pork we put in the greens and all of that crap. That's something we inherited. And it's been killing us ever since we got it. 
So when you go to a doctor and the doctor tells you, you need to change your diet, that's not antithetical to your faith. The doctor is trying to tell you something that you should have been doing in the first place, but because <clears throat> your ancestors didn't have any wisdom in the, in the matter and we were only eating, they were only eating what Massa gave to them. And we've inherited that same foolishness. So we're eating crap that was crap that Massa didn't want. And he just threw it out and said, here, y'all take this. Yeah. Yeah. Check your history. Check your history and then do the history of your family to find out what they died from. I refuse to die from what my parents and my four parents, parents died from. I refuse. I refuse. So my wife is very healthy. My wife is very healthy. We eat very healthy. We are close to the vegan side. We're not vegan. We're more on the pesco side. And I still eat what I want to whenever I want to eat it. However, we eat more on the healthy side. We have to know better. Your healing is not antithetical to science nor what the doctors say. Stop with that foolishness. That's foolishness. And you will die talking about I'm healed when the doctor gave you the right pills to take to help you with your healing and to keep you here a little bit longer. Even Jesus gave directions, told people what they had to do to be healed. Go do this. Go do this. The prophets of old, one of them told him, go wash yourself in the pool. Go over there and wash in the pool. He's like, why I got to go wash in a dirty pool? There's other rivers over here. Why I, got, why I can't go to that river over there and, and, and wash? And his people told him, dude. If he'd have told you to do something else, you would have did it. Go wash in the pool. And as he went and washed in the pool, he was healed. The prophet served in the place of the doctor. Science. It's not antithetical to your healing. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. I'm throwing it out there again at you. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. Bless us as we're blessing you. See? This is something that we don't do that much culturally. We'll rather go pay Tony Robbins and other people to come speak to us and pay a high premium. Many of us paid a high premium to go see Oprah and to get that information only for Gail to flip on y'all with the Kobe incident. But we don't take care of our own. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. Sow into us as we're sowing into you. Let's finish this thing out. Maddie proves that there's always somebody pushing you, encouraging you, and ensuring that you reach your destiny. Maddie was pushing her daughters, encouraging her daughters, and ensuring that they reached her, their place. Catch this. Maddie didn't even reach the place that she wanted to get to. She did some records, yeah, but she didn't make it to the plateau that they did. Why is that? See, here I have a principle with that. The principle is this, that you're always going to reach a higher place than the one that's, that's helping you get there because you're standing on their shoulders. You're supposed to get reach higher. My children are supposed to reach a higher place. My son should eclipse everything. My daughter, my two daughters and my two sons should reach higher plateaus than we reached because they're standing on Tony and I's shoulders. So they're taller. The Clark sisters are taller than Maddie because they were standing on Maddie's shoulder. So they should have won the Grammys. They should have reached the masses. Because they're standing on her shoulders. So the question is, whose shoulders are you standing on? When you tell your story, when your story is written, make sure that you honor the people whose shoulders that you're standing on. Too many of us don't tell the whole story. We act like we were just birthed into greatness. We act as if we just showed up on the stage and we were phenomenal. You're lying. You're lying. That's from leaders all the way down. You're lying. You weren't birthed from the womb and phenomenal. Somebody poured into you. Somebody helped you get there. Somebody trained you. Somebody brought you under their wing and poured into you on a regular basis. Somebody let you sit your sorry self on their stage next to them while you learned your craft. Somebody let you play for them knowing you could only play in one key. Before there was transposition, they sung in the wrong key just so that you could play in the right key. You can only play in one key, so they sung in the wrong key, which was not their key, just so that you could play in the one key that you knew. Hmm? Singers, somebody let you in their group and you knew you weren't qualified. You knew you weren't qualified. Somebody let you in. You're standing on somebody's shoulders. Honor them. Honor them. 
Identify the person whose shoulders you're standing on and hold them close. Identify the person who's pushing you, encouraging you, and ensuring that you reach your destiny. God has assigned people to us that are encouraging us, pushing us, and ensuring that we reach our destinies. There are certain phone calls that you get out of the blue where somebody's asking you, what's going on with that book you were supposed to be writing? What's going on with that record you was working on? What's going on with that, that job opportunity that you talked about? Those are the ones that are pushing, encouraging, and ensuring that you reach your destiny. God has assigned them to your life. You are standing on their shoulders. There's a guy who passed away, and I talked about him a while ago. His name was Eugene Moorhead. Eugene Moorhead. Only a few people would even know his name if I said. You had to be in that circle with my father's church to even know that name. And he was only there for a brief season. But God sent him there. He was an engineer. God sent him there. He was a trained engineer. That was his craft. But he was a frustrated musician. He wanted to be a musician. But he realized that he wouldn't reach that dream. But he had the equipment. He bought keyboards. He bought an amp. He bought a bass guitar. And he gravitated to me. This is right when uh, the electronic music was about to jump off with the, with the new drum machines and all of this new technology. This is right before all of that happened, late 80s, mid to late 80s. And he started pushing magazines in my face saying, you need to learn this. I was like, what are you talking about, man? I'm playing, man. I'm doing my thing. He was like, no, man, you need to learn this. And I was frustrated because he kept, every time I saw him, every week I saw him, he was in my choir. He would come to the church and he's pushing these magazines keyboard magazines and mix magazines, push, pushing this information in my face saying, learn this. I acquiesced and I learned all that information. I, I learned the information so well that I didn't even own the keyboards and I knew more, more than the people in the music stores just from learning the information. He bought the equipment and I would borrow, he would let me use the equipment that he had in his home because he knew I didn't have no money. I didn't have the money to buy the equipment. God assigned him to my life to help me. When I moved to California, my lifeline I thought was cut off with Eugene because I didn't have the gear anymore. So I moved out there with a little Casio keyboard with the small tiny keys. And I had an RX-21 drum machine that I got from Yamaha that I had gotten when I went over and did a workshop over in Japan, met somebody, he shipped it back to me. I bought it from him there, okay? Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. It's Kevin Bond. ITS Kevin Bond. John Schultz, thank you for keeping that before the people. Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. Eugene called me on a whim one day while I was in California and said, dude, what's going on? How are things going in California? I said, man, it's going good, man, but I, I just got to get some money to buy some equipment. He said, what do you need? He said, I said, I need some keyboards, man. I don't have anything. He said, don't worry, man. Go to your mailbox. Uh, uh, I'm sending you something. He sent me the two keyboards that he had at his house. And I realized that he didn't buy the keyboards for himself. God told him to buy the keyboard so he could be a blessing to me. I kept those keyboards and helped me. That helped me to birth my studio and to birth my songwriting and production. God assigned him to me to push me, to encourage me, and to ensure that I reach my destiny. I am standing on his shoulders as well. When I began to buy and was able to purchase things on my own, I boxed his keyboards up and I sent them back to him. But had I not had them, I would have been behind the electronic curve. Instead, we were in front of the electronic curve. God will assign people to your life to encourage you, to push you, and to ensure you reach your destiny. That's what Maddie was for the girls. An encourager, a pusher, an insurer. Who in your life is your mm, encourager? Who's pushing you? Huh? Who's ensuring that you reach your destiny? I got to get on. When you identify that person, you hold them close to you for the rest of your life. Eugene passed away a few years ago. He passed away a few years ago, and it broke my heart when I found out that he passed away because I was living elsewhere, and we had, we had lost contact with each other. But today I honor his memory, and forever I will honor his memory. I build a memorial to him every time I talk about that story because he pushed me, he encouraged me, and he ensured that I reached my destiny, in addition to everybody else. 
Let's get on out of here. Maddie didn't want her girls to see her in her weakest hour, which was her death. Did you notice how she pushed her girls out the room? She gave them a word of encouragement. She spoke into each one of them. She spoke into each one of them. And then she said, get out of here. Go get me some barbecue. Go get me some barbecue. And they knew she wasn't supposed to be eating barbecue. It goes back to the foot problem, the diabetic problem, whatever it was. She wasn't supposed to be eating no barbecue, but she pushed them out of the room because she didn't want them to see her die. The strongest one never wants you to see them in their weakest hour. The strongest one never wants you to see them in their weakest hour. I got a story that I could tell in this moment. I'm not going to tell it. I'm going to save it for another time. But there's a story I could tell about my grandfather, my father, and I. There was a moment that happened a few years ago when my grandfather was about to die, there was a moment that happened. And I'll tell that story at another time. I don't think I'm strong enough to tell that story right now. But it's about that strongest one, never wanting to be seen in their weakest moment. Hmm. Cash App, once again, it's Kevin Bond. Cash App, it's Kevin Bond. Hmm. That story, I'm not, I can't tell it right now. I'm going to finish this up by saying this. Maddie was the glue. She was the glue to the family. When she fell off the scene, Twinkie had a breakdown. Karen had health challenges. The quote was this from tonight. The glue from the parent is the life's blood of the children. The glue from the parent, that which holds the family together, is the lifeblood of the children. So as a parent, make sure that you are gluing your family together because that's the blood that's going to sustain them. Hmm? That's the blood that's going to sustain them. God ordained it that way. Yeah, God ordained it that way. So listen, I've given you many nuggets Many nuggets for you to hold on to. Many nuggets for you to hold on to. The movie was full of them. The movie was full of nuggets the whole way through. Many of them are still listed on my page. If you want to go back and peruse my page, it's listed on my page. Take your time and go through them. Go through them. They're going to help you through your life. If you want to sow back to us for what we've sown into you tonight, feel free. It's Kevin Bond, I-T-S, Kevin Bond. Take a moment. As you bless us, God will bless you as well. Listen. We're approaching Easter tomorrow. This is the most unique Easter most of us will ever face. We are not able to go to a public worship. We're not able to go to a corporate worship. But you are actually able to worship how worship was ordained from day one. Worship from day one was ordained in our households. Worship was ordained for the priest of the house, the man of the house, the woman of the house to lead the worship with their family. This is your opportunity to take worship back. Take it away from what we have called it in the past. Yes, my PayPal is Kevin at KevinBond.com. PayPal, Kevin at KevinBond.com. Feel free to send that way as well. Cash app, it's Kevin Bond. Thanks for those who are asking. Before God created a sanctuary, he created a people. Before he created that people, he created a family. This is the opportunity for us to worship as a family. Stop talking about what you don't have. What you have is the opportunity to take worship back. I, 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 I wrote something a couple of days ago, or yesterday as a matter of fact, that said that Jesus canceled his birthday party, which is Easter, because many of us don't invite him to the party, nor do we allow him to make any of the plans for the party. So he just canceled it. So here we are now in a moment where it's going to prove, do we really worship God? Do you really worship God? Because if you worship him, really, you don't need a stage. 
You don't need microphones. You don't need walls. You don't need a band. You don't need singers. You don't need uniforms. You should be able to roll out of your bed in the morning. You should be able to wake up and see a new day and be able to worship God. You should be able to open your mouth when your feet hit the floor and say, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to walk. I thank you that my limbs work. When you open your eyes and you can see, thank you for vision, God. When you're able to see your family, Lord, I thank you for my family. When you wake up in a, a place with a roof over your head, you should be able to say, Lord, I thank you for a roof over my head and begin to worship him. Not just praise for the things, but to be able to worship him because he's God, just because he's God. This is our opportunity to take worship back. Take it back from a corporate structure that we have relented it to. Many of us are so dependent upon the corporate structure that we can't worship unless we're in the corporate structure. That's an indictment against God. This is our opportunity to take worship back. This is an opportunity for us to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. The beauty of his holiness has nothing to do with the building. It's because God is beautiful. It's because he's holy. To worship God in spirit and in truth has nothing to do with the building. In spirit means the spirit that's inside of you, the Holy Spirit that resonates within you. Know ye not that your body is the temple where the Holy Ghost dwells? Paul said it that way. Hmm? Jesus said, when I leave, I will send you another comforter and he will abide with you in you forever. We have the spirit. We worship him in spirit. My spirit resonates with his spirit. My spirit connects with his spirit. And in the truth of who he is, in the truth of who he is, not what we've created him to be. The problem is we've created him to be something that he is not. And many of us are grappling with the created Christ versus the truthful Christ. Our challenge is not who the truthful Christ is. It's the fact that we've created another Christ that we worship. And this Christ is all about getting stuff. This Christ is all about prosperity. This Christ is all about my building. This Christ is all about being in that place. And if I'm not in that place, then Christ is not there. That's not the truth of who Christ is. The truth of who Christ is says, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst of you. The truth about who Christ is, is Christ will walk into your room, even when you can't walk out of your room. The truth about who Christ is, was visible in the Old Testament, even as we see these plagues going around our nation right now. Coronavirus is nothing more than like one of the 10 plagues. And he said this, catch this, this was an archetype of Christ. He said, put blood on the doorposts. That was an Old Testament archetype of a New Testament Christ. Yesterday, we celebrate the day that Christ gave his blood. Put blood on the doorposts. Christ gave his blood. As we make sure that we have the blood on our doorpost, that simply means make sure that Christ is in your heart, in your house. The doorpost is not your physical uh, building that you live in. That house is a house that Paul was talking about. And if this house be dissolved, this earthly tabernacle, I have another building not made by hands eternal in the heaven. Is the blood written on your doorpost? Is it written on your heart? Jesus. Jesus. Blood on the doorpost. That was an archetype. That was a pre-existence of Christ. It was giving us a figment of what Christ was in the Old Testament. When he shed his blood. We've missed the big picture. And I'm going to come back and share what the bigger picture is. There's a bigger picture and we've missed the bigger picture. The bigger picture, we have totally missed the bigger picture. I'm just trying to get you through this Easter tomorrow. Thank God for this moment, because I wasn't going to come online. I was not coming online. God has silenced me and told me, don't say anything. The movie 
freed me, and he told me it's time to come online. That's the only reason I'm here talking to you tonight. As you celebrate Easter, and you'll be doing so in about seven minutes, what we're going to do, I'm going to stay online long enough just to pray us into this Easter. As you celebrate Easter, I want you to think about the things that you're grateful for. I want you to think about the things that you're grateful for. If you're still online and there's still a few hundred of you that are online right now, I want you to just type in some things that you're grateful for this Easter. Start typing in stuff. Don't worry about who's looking at it. I'm looking at it. Start typing in what you're grateful for this Easter right now. Start typing in because we've allowed the virus to take away our spirit of thanksgiving. We've allowed the virus to take away our thanksgiving. This is a moment of thanksgiving. So start typing in right now what you're grateful for. D. Reese, I see it. You're saying you're grateful for health. Oscar said he's grateful for salvation. Come on. Schultz said he's grateful for family. Come on. Come on. Come on. What are you grateful for? Melvin said he's grateful for life. What are you grateful for? Schultz said he's grateful for health. What are you grateful for? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. What are you grateful for? Sheena says she's grateful for joy. Jesus, in the midst of this situation, in the midst of calamity, so some, somebody said, Sheena said she's grateful for joy. D. Meister Brister said, Maestro said he's grateful for his family and his family's health. Yes, you need to be grateful for health right now because there are people dying around you right now. Sheena says she's grateful for life. What are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? This Easter, what are you grateful for? Some of us are just holding the phone and looking at the phone. No, this ain't the time to hold. This is the time to testify. Schultz said he's grateful for breath. Yeah, because this virus is killing you slowly because there are people that say they get to the point where they can't breathe. Jada says she's grateful for joy. She's grateful for health, abundance, and a sound mind. Salvation. Somebody said grace. Somebody said she's grateful for a mom and dad and a bonus mom and dad. Carolyn said this, and that she's still alive and that they're well over at the age of 60. Relationship. We're grateful for life. We're grateful for family, life, health, and salvation. Come on. Come on. What are you grateful for? Amber, what are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? I'm grateful for my nation, T. Renee says. Shay Simpson said she's grateful for Jesus and his sacrifice and family, health, employment, relationships. Come on, provision. Will said family, the, ab the ability and the st to still work. Yes, sir. Health and new creative ideas. Yes, sir. For life, salvation. What are you grateful for? If you can't say what you're grateful for, then I, I find it hard for you to worship a God that you don't even know what to thank him for. If you can't write it down, if you can't write it down, then chances are then you can't worship for it. You can't thank God for it because you're not even able to voice it. Valerie says she's grateful for life, for health, for strength, friends, family. Joseph said peace of God. Cammy says for life, salvation, redemption, the covering of the blood of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, people. Testify. Kedron said, for a quiet time in the midst of quarantine. See, sometimes God has, I've been telling y'all for, for years now to quiet your spirit. It took a coronavirus for us to quiet our spirit and to sit our behinds down and to be quiet. See, the room thinned out when we start talking about the things of God. Black folks, we want to talk about movies and we want to talk about chatter and, and gossip. The room thinned out real quick when we start talking about the things of God. And that's OK, because there's always a remnant that wants God only. And I appreciate those of you who stayed for God. See, this is a time for you to testify. Peace in the midst of it all. Uh, somebody said they're grateful. Uh, a tizzy said he's grateful for his bills, for his business and finances not been affected by this pandemic. Yes, sir. Uh, Brandon said he lost those. Oh, Jesus. <coughs> Brandon said he's lost close to 30 people. Brandon, we're praying for you and your circle. Uh, Yasidra says the gift of eternal life. Joy, Joy still said life, family, and peace. Schultz said grateful for marriage. Yes, sir. Jason Sinclair said provision. Nicole said the ability to be able to breathe. Grateful to be in my right mind. Let me go down this line. Grateful for the price Jesus paid. Grateful that I can still visit mom and dad. I don't have COVID working as a nurse. Amber Lee, God be praised. Grateful for peace in the midst. Able to work from home. Yes, healthcare providers, Valerie. Yes, ma'am. To breathe, borrowed breath, Nicole says. Grateful for salvation, family rest and peace. 
Uh, grateful for the blood of Jesus, grateful for business, not suffering during the crisis, great uh, provision during the pandif pandemic, health, family. Oh, my God. Look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Lord, have mercy. Come on. Come on, Shalon Martin. What are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? The blood of for covering me. Another chance for truth. Grateful for more than I can express here. I'm also grateful that he is my supply, including rest, peace, uh, uh, ability to hear. Jerry, I see you. I see you. <clears throat> I see you. Come on, bring the testimonies, people. If you can't voice it, then it's very difficult for you to worship for it. We're about to walk into Easter right now. We're walking in. I'm going to wait about six seconds and I'm going with a prayer right now. Two seconds. Father, in the name of Jesus, I cover everyone on this post and those who were here even prior, those who left before we got to this place that we focus only on you. We cover the world right now in the midst of this pandemic. Your word tells us in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will hear and I will heal. Today, <clears throat> my God, we are praying for hearing. We're praying for healing. We're praying for hearing. We're praying for healing. We are humbling ourselves right now at your feet as we stand to celebrate the death of our Christ and him rising from the dead. We as a nation, we as a world will rise from this pandemic. We will rise and we will defeat this situation. While you may not have sent it, you have allowed it. And everything that you allow has purpose. And for that, we are grateful, God. We accept the purpose. We accept what you are doing right now. We accept what you are doing right now. If you agree with me right now, just type in in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the world know that we stand in agreement right now. Let heaven know that we are in agreement right now. Father, we pray for everyone who has health challenges. We pray for their healing. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for their healing and their consolation. We pray for those who have lost their jobs. We pray that you would bring back provision. We pray for those who are, who are uh, in doubt right now. We pray that their faith be strengthened. We pray for families that they be not corrupted in the midst of this, that there be not arguments, but there will be a shoring up of the family and there is an assurance of the family that they will stand strong together by God's grace in Jesus name. We thank God for Jesus. We thank you for his sacrifice. And we know that your word says, and I, if I be lifted up, and that's what the cross represents. And I, if I be lifted up, will draw men unto you. This pandemic has purpose. It's not to take lives. It's to propel lives back to you. It's to focus lives back on you. It's to bring us back closer to you. It's to bring us back closer to our families. Many of us have been using our jobs and our ministries as a means to get away from our families. And God said, no. I'm shutting it all down, so you have to go home. You have to stay home. You have to love one another. As we love one another, we show the world that we are Christians by the love we show. Help us to win and not whine in this hour. Help us to brag and to boast on your goodness and your favor. Help us to brag on who you are. We proclaim you as Rapha, our healer. Jaira, our provider, our sustainer. Give us a greater testimony when this is all over. But don't let us just wait till it's over. Help us to testify even right now through it. That's what's going to bring the world closer to you. Jesus. Jesus. We're grateful for Jesus. And we worship you, God. We worship you. We honor you. We honor you for who you are in our lives. We honor you for the price you paid. We honor you for your place of authority that you sit therein in heaven. 
We honor you for watching over us even in this hour. We honor you for being our elder brother, for identifying with us, our kinsman redeemer. And we're grateful that you sent the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in this moment. We will never leave you. We will never forsake you. We bless your name and we honor you, God. We will win. We will not whine in this hour. We will win. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors. We are encompassed by a great cloud of witnesses who are standing in the stands and cheering us on. Because of that, we will lay aside every weight and every sin that easily besets us. And we will look unto Jesus, <laughs> the author and the sustainer, the finisher of our life and our faith. It's in the name of Christ Jesus. We celebrate Easter. We celebrate your glorious resurrection. As you were in the tomb, we are in, the, in our homes. You told us to put blood on the doorpost. We put the blood of Jesus on our hearts right now. And we stand unified. Lead us, guide us, have your way in Jesus' name. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, everyone. Celebrate Christ today. Celebrate Christ. Win today. Don't whine today. Celebrate Christ today. Celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. Celebrate him. And as you lift him, he will lift our world. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear and I will heal their land. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. If you agree with this prayer, just simply type in the word, Amen, Happy Easter. Amen, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Lord God, we celebrate you. Happy Easter, Lord God, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you because you're a good God. You're an amazing God. We celebrate you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Day. As he got up, so will we get up. As he rose, so will we rise. As he was triumphant, so will, be. will we be triumphant. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. Once again, our cash out. It's Kevin Bond if you want to sow into our ministry. If you want to sow into our ministry, it's Kevin Bond. PayPal, Kevin at KevinBond.com. God is good. God is faithful. We honor your name, Jesus. We bless you, God. We thank you for who you are. And we honor who you are. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Thank you for this time of fellowship. Thank you for being, being, bringing us into a mega setting, even though we can't congregate as a corporate body. You bought us here corporately. You bought us right here corporately. Hundreds of us gathered right here. By the time it's over, there'll be thousands of us gathered right here. And your word simply said, where two or three are gathered. But you bought thousands of us together tonight. As God puts it on your heart, so a seed. Kevin at KevinBond.com is our cash app, is our PayPal information. It's Kevin Bond is our cash app. God, we're grateful. We love you. We honor you. We bless your holy name. You're a faithful God. You're a faithful God. Never seen a righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. If there's anybody on this line who's who's losing hope, 
Open your word. Download the Promise Bible and just read the different promises of God. Just read the promises of God and meditate on the promises of God. God is faithful. God is faithful. He has you covered. You're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. We all going to be all right. There's a testimony on the other side of this story. And I can't wait to hear the testimonies that will come from this story. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Have a blessed Easter. Follow whatever ministry that will bless you later on this morning. Tune in. Get another word. Let somebody else speak more life into you. And then pour into your family. Take worship back. Take worship back. That's what this is all about. God is allowing the family to take worship back. Take it away from the corporate structure that we have basically given it away to. Take worship back. Worship in your homes. Worship with your family. Take worship back today. Take it back. This is an opportunity. Yes, Nicole, we had resurrection service right here. Sunrise service, we had it right here. God be praised. God be praised. If this has blessed you, our cash app is It's Kevin Bond. It's Kevin Bond. You can go back and watch the replay, whatever you need to do. Bless, may God bless you even as you watch it again. It's Kevin Bond is our cash app. Our PayPal is Kevin at KevinBond.com. As we blessed you. Pour back into us, if you will. God bless you guys. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Be encouraged. We will win. We will not whine. We will win. We will not whine. We're stronger than this. You're built to handle it. Commercial said that Ford is built for it tough. No, we built kingdom tough. You're going to make it through this. And you're going to be a victor. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. May God bless you. I love you. I love you. I'll see you soon. Be encouraged.